I decided to use the Off the Record app to fight my speeding ticket. And Off the Record claims a 97% success rate if you use their app to fight a speeding ticket. And they even offer a money back guarantee if you fight the ticket and lose. Sounds like a no brainer, right? Well, apparently, their definition of success may not match up to what you or I might consider a win. If you've been a viewer of the channel for a while now, you may recall that over a year ago, I was pulled over for speeding in my BRZ. And I decided to fight that ticket by using the Off The Record app. I made a video about six months ago talking about why I decided to fight it and what was possibly going to happen. If you want to go back and watch that video for the background, I'll link it up top and also down in the description below. But the short version is that I got the ticket in September 2021 and the fine for the ticket was $490. So I decided to take a chance and fight it and at the same time try the Off The Record app because I saw ads for their service and they claim a 97% success rate. And they offer a money back guarantee if you lose. So I figured why not give it a try? What do I have to lose? So I paid a little under $180 to Off The Record to cover the attorney's fees, and the attorney they matched me up with took over fighting the ticket for me. I didn't have to go to court, and I didn't have to pay the $490 up front. They requested a trial, and it was set for January 2023. So I basically sat back and waited for the past year and four months. And this month, my attorney got back to me and told me what the outcome was. And it wasn't good news. I'm guilty and I have to pay the fine. Now, basically, we were banking on the hope that the CHP officer who gave me the ticket wouldn't show up to the trial. I talked about the possible scenarios in my previous video. And unfortunately, it didn't work out for me. It turns out he did show up in court that day, which means very likely losing if we went forward with the trial. So the next best option at that point is to basically plead guilty, ask the judge for a fine reduction, and also ask for traffic school, which will avoid me getting a point on my license. And the judge did grant those requests. So the $490 got reduced down to $367. And because I was ticketed for going more than 26 miles per hour over the speed limit, I would normally not be eligible for traffic school, but my attorney asked for an exception and the judge granted it. So I'm guilty. I have to pay the $367 fine plus $57 traffic school fee, which takes me up to $424. Not to mention the $180 I paid to off the record and my attorney. So that is $600 out of pocket, which sucks. I lost. Well, wait a minute, you might say. What about that 97% success rate that Off The Record claimed and that money back guarantee? Since you didn't win, you'll at least get that $180 back, right? Wrong. You see, you have to read the fine print on Off The Record's website to understand how the refund policy works. And according to their policy, my outcome is considered a success, even though I consider it a loss. Why? Because from off the record's perspective, the attorney was able to get me something that I would not have received if I had not fought the ticket, had I just pled guilty on my own and paid the original fine. I got a fine reduction and I got traffic school. Let's take a closer look. Here's their refund policy. There's a lot to go through here, but the gist of it is, if you completely lose and get the worst possible outcome, where you have to pay the full fines for the ticket and the ticket will go on your driving record, then you can get a refund from off the record. So if I had been found guilty and there was no fine reduction, I could have gotten a refund. 
or if the judge had denied the request for traffic school and I was going to get a point on my record, then even if I got a fine reduction, I might have gotten a partial refund. Either of those would have been considered a loss and they'd give me a refund. But because I did get both of those things, my case is going to be considered a success, even though I feel like I lost. That very liberal definition of what is considered a successful case is how they can claim that 97% success rate, even if, in many cases, the client likely was found guilty and had to pay a fine, albeit a reduced one. Is that a little bit shady? I think it was a very shrewdly calculated but potentially misleading statement by their marketing department. It's true that, like probably all those other 97% of their clients, I did get some value out of the representation by the attorneys. They went to court for me, fought the ticket, and even though I was guilty, they got me those two things, a reduced fine and traffic school, as a means to keep the point off my driving record. Literally, they're named off the record. It sounds great when you say 97% success rate, it really made me think that my odds of beating this case and not having to pay the fines were pretty great. And thinking that even if I lost, I'd have the guarantee that I'd get my money back from the attorney's fees, which made it feel like I was taking on very little risk by signing up with them and fighting the ticket. So am I happy with Off the Record and my attorney? I do have to say that they provided me a service and I am generally satisfied with the level of service that they provided me. To be fair, the app worked as promised. They connected me to the lawyer, and the lawyer was very responsive, communicated with me throughout the case to keep me informed of what was happening, answered my questions, and did what I expected of them. So in that sense, yeah, they did a good job. Am I happy with the result? No, I'm not. But these are two different things. It's kind of like after you had an accident and you need to file an insurance claim and it ends up costing you some money to repair, but the insurance does what they're supposed to do, helps you pay for at least some of the damage. There might be deductibles and other out-of-pocket expenses you have to pay, and at the end of the day, you're not happy that you had an accident. It sucks that you had to deal with it. But that doesn't mean that the insurance failed you they did their part. So I feel the same way about this. It sucks that I lost the case, but that's not really the attorney's fault and neither is it off the records. I took a chance. Maybe I was more optimistic about my chances than I should have been, but it didn't pay off. They did their best to mitigate the damage. And for that, I think I paid a fair price for their service. Would I use off the record again if I got another traffic ticket? Maybe. If I were to get another ticket in the same county, I might just reach out to the same attorney directly and see if they would take the case for a similar fee and just cut out the middleman of off the record. Since I already know who they are and they do a good job, I'd just work with them. If I got a ticket in another jurisdiction that this attorney doesn't handle, then maybe I'd use off the record to connect me to another attorney who can take the case. Although, I've just realized that I have another option. I just recently enrolled in a legal plan offered by my employer that I believe would cover me for traffic and speeding tickets. It just went into effect for me at the start of this year, and it's kind of like an insurance plan that gives me attorney assistance for almost any kind of legal issue. If you work for a company that offers that kind of legal plan, you might want to look into it as well. My wife and I decided to get it because it will also allow us to set up some estate planning documents like wills and trusts. But I was pretty glad to see that it would cover tickets too, all for one flat fee each year. It is a little pricey, however. We're paying about $500 for the plan this year. Like I said, we're also going to use it to set up a will or trust, so it made sense to sign up. It might not make sense to continue subscribing to the plan next year, 
unless we expect to need legal services again in the coming year. I wouldn't pay for the plan if the only purpose was to cover potential speeding tickets. So there you have it. That's my experience with Off the Record. I am disappointed that it didn't work out for me. I definitely didn't get the ideal outcome from doing this. Will I still try to fight any future traffic or speeding tickets? Yes, I think in most cases it makes sense to fight your tickets. You want to keep these tickets off your record and keep your auto insurance rates as low as possible. If you're eligible for traffic school and the fine is fairly low, maybe lower than the cost to hire an attorney to fight it, then maybe you can just pay the fine and do the school and be done with it. But if, like me, you were facing the higher fines and possibly not being given traffic school, then it's worth the extra cost and taking a chance to fight it. That's my opinion, at least. Well, have you fought tickets on your own or through the Off the Record app? How did it go for you? If you have any tips for me, or any other drivers who might get a ticket, please leave it in the comments, or share your ticket stories with us. Okay, take it easy, and I'll see you in the next video. For now, it looks like I've got to go sign myself up for an online traffic school so that I can put all of this behind me. Drive safe, everyone. I fought the law, and the law won.